guys, how's it going? Chess back again with episode number 11 of the Chelsea Career Mode here on Xbox One. And after feedback in the comments of the last couple of videos, decided to reject the international job offer from the Ivory Coast, hoping to uh, pick up a better job offer from uh, perhaps a more competitive country at the top end of world football, closer to the Rio 2014 World Cup. So we're going to jump back to Premier League action now. We've got Southampton at home. Now, this was a very, very good game in real life, actually. Southampton played superbly well for the first time half went in at half time 1-0 up and then Chelsea came back and scored three goals in the second half to win the game overall but as you can see we are currently sat seventh in the table kind of holding down that seventh spot right now not really moving up or down just kind of keeping pace with those above us but we were hoping to try and put some form together after a couple of dodgy results not necessarily dodgy results just a couple of results that uh, weren't necessarily as good as they could have been a couple of draws where we could have won and perhaps a defeat where we deserved a draw etc so we were trying to find the winning formula and just as a side note what was he doing why is he a yard out from the goal and he's squared it i don't understand i'm not complaining i don't i could quite easily have gone one nil down there and uh, I'm very, very glad that I didn't. And I'm also very, very annoyed that Eden Hazard, after doing all that hard work out on the left-hand side, smashes his shot wider than the far post. Hazard is a really hot, cold player for me. He will either be absolutely fantastic and bang in two goals a game and set up two more and twist and turn out of players and everything will go absolutely fantastically well. Or he'll just be dog shit. Absolutely awful. His touch will be completely woeful. His passing will be inaccurate. His shooting will go high and wide. I don't know what to do with Eden Hazard, honestly. I don't know whether... Look at this. No pressure on the... I thought perhaps, in, you know, in real time, maybe I got a little bit of pressure on the ball when he was off balance, etc. But if you look at the replay, he's got nobody around him. All he's got to do is just bend that into the top corner. A player of his ability should be able to do that. And I, I'm genuinely considering selling Eden Hazard in the next transfer window. He gets another chance here. One-on-one. -on -one. Just put it in the back of the net. Please just put it in the back of the net. We haven't been scoring goals very well recently. And that is the sort of play that is the reason why. And uh, I don't know. I might give it until the end of the season just to see how he does for the rest of the uh, rest of the campaign. And uh, potentially sell him on it in the summer if I do that. Because Eden Hazard, there's 40 to £50 million pounds sat there if we can get the right price from the right club. And uh, that is... I could buy a, a more effective player, not necessarily a better player in overall rating or pace or dribbling stats, but I could buy a more effective player, a player that's going to give me what I need when I need it. But as you can see on screen, we've ended up drawing that game nil-nil after uh, we had a decent game actually, a lot of possession, a lot of chances. One thing to note, which is extremely weird, look at that, every single game played in the Premier League that day was a nil-nil draw. And I was that kind of played with my mind a little bit. I was like, well, is there something kind of untoward slash scripting going on there? So I went and had a fiddle with the tactics. I went into the game against Sunderland, which incidentally is a quarter final of the Capital One Cup. And uh, I've been trying to fiddle with the tactics fiddle with the tactics a little bit recently to try and find that winning formula to try and make sure that we can improve our performances overall and uh, get results as and when we need them. And basically the gist of this final tweak was I just raised the tempo a little bit. I upped the speed of uh, of the way that attacks were made, added a little bit more risk into the way the uh, the passes were going to be played and how the player movement around the person on the ball was. And look how it worked. Three minutes into the next game. Three minutes, 1-0 up. A few minutes before the second half, Fernando Torres may have, with the previous tactics, been hanging about on the edge of the box. No, he's driving into the box, making a darting run so that I can play the ball across to him to put the ball into the back of the net. I was so, so happy that this game was going this way. It was a fantastic ball across from Andres Schoeller. I wasn't sure whether to stand it up through the air or drill it. I went for the drill and a fantastic finish from Fernando Torres. Just showing that extra bit of appetite for the game and to get on the end of the ball. And I was so happy. I couldn't, I cannot put into words how relieved I was to hopefully have found a winning formula and have found the, uh, the way that we need to play to grind out goals, grind out wins. Look at the domination, 57% possession, six shots, five on target, two goals, two goals. We haven't scored two goals in the game in ages. Apart from that 3-0 win against West Ham, and uh, we've only scored three goals in two games, I think, so far this year, against Norwich and against West Ham. Other than that, we're averaging one goal a game. 
and uh, maybe getting two. We got two against Zenit St. Petersburg twice, but other than that, we've been struggling for goals overall. But I was playing this corner, looking for Sen initially for the first uh, first ball across for him to whack from the edge of the box. Fortunately, it bounces back out to him, and he absolutely strikes one. And you'll see from the replay, the movement on this ball is wonderful. You notice, or if you remember, the Willian shot from last episode against AC Milan that was going in and swerved away outside of the uh, outside of the post. This did exactly the same, but the opposite of that. It was going going, uh, you know, quite away towards the middle of the goal, and just as it got to five or six yard box, it swerved to the right, away from the goalkeeper, into the back of the net, and we almost scored another screamer there from Oscar, the movement on that one was absolutely insane as well, we're getting chance after chance after chance, admittedly that was a bit of a poor play from me there, the defensive line got caught out, and I don't know how he's missed an open goal, we got an absolute let off with that one against Southampton in the first game of the episode, I honestly don't know how he missed that one, and this one, perhaps he was a little bit unfortunate there that the, uh, the, the, it swung away from him at the last minute and was going in. But we're going to take a 3-0 win against Sunderland. A scoreline and a performance that we haven't seen for a very long time. And as you can see, Tottenham are through to the semi-final as well. So we're going to... Oh, as far as I can make out, I think that he, rather than having a legitimate draw that you know switches things around, I think we will be playing Tottenham on that ladder in the semi-final. And as if the delight from that game wasn't enough, I've got an email come through. Let's have a look at it. The England manager's job. The best job in world football for an English person or an English fan. I couldn't believe it. I turned down the Ivory Coast uh, job earlier on in the episode, thanks to feedback from you. I, uh, I'm not going to ask you whether to, uh, whether to take the England job or not. I'm just going to jump at it with both hands, both feet, face. I want that job. That is absolutely perfect they've already qualified for the Rio 2014 World Cup so we'll have a couple of friendlies between now and uh, and the summer and then we'll be able to take England on a World Cup journey I am so excited about that I cannot wait we'll do another mini series like we did with France in the uh, in the Tottenham career but let's get back to Premier League action so we were still sat at seventh loving seventh position right now five wins seven draws one defeat that defeat we picked up in the last one against Newcastle and uh, hoping to build on the performance that we got against Sunderland three minutes in Kevin De Bruyne's done it again what is wrong with this guy right now he's absolutely banging them in he's starting on fire with this formation not the formation the tactics just working absolute wonders. If you go back and have a look at the the whole the bigger picture of uh, of that goal, look how many blue shirts are rushing forward, making the runs in case something goes wrong or in case a pass uh, you know presents itself. I think I think we may have solved our form problems. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, it may take another two or three episodes to kind of build up a level of uh, a level of performance consistently that will uh, hopefully lead us towards those european spots and maybe maybe the title who knows it's still a long way to go i saw a comment on uh, on either yesterday's video or the video before on uh, on friday that said the title was already gone manchester city have already got it sewn up i don't think they have i honestly if we can put a run together a run of form together I genuinely think that we can still challenge for the title in this season. And uh, absolute save, I have to say, from uh, Thomas Sorensen there. Wonderful, wonderful football from him. I don't understand why Stoke sold Asmir Begovic. Uh, I'll be honest. They sold him on uh, on uh, just an off-camera career mode that I uh, am doing with Manchester City as well. And uh, they've sold him on this Chelsea one as well. And still got Thomas Sorensen in goal, which is disappointing for them because he's one of the best goalkeepers on the game, especially in the Premier League. But uh, we end that game with a 1-0 win. So... Uh, Still 7th, still 7th, but we're pushing a lot closer. There's an 11-point gap to Man City. It is a lot. It is a lot to catch up, but I'm confident of doing it. I, If you'd have asked me two episodes ago if I was confident of catching Man City at the top of the league, I would have been completely, I would have completely said no, not a chance. But having made those tactical changes and seen this, the vast improvement in the, in the performance and the goals and on an individual basis as well apart from Eden Hazard it has to be said but hopefully if uh, if the whole team is playing better then hopefully he can play better as well so uh, fingers crossed this is the turning point in our season we can power on and we can be successful we're in the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup already we could have a, a, a final appearance coming up in the new year we're getting very close to the January transfer window now I may have to sell to buy I may have to sell to buy. I'm not too sure what my financial situation is. We'll have a look at that as and when we get to that period. But that is going to bring this episode to a close, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. If we can hit 60 again like we have done on the previous few career mode episodes, that would be absolutely 
superb and if you aren't subscribed to the channel already then feel free to do so there will be a link in the description and an annotation on screen over that little subscribe button and there is also an annotation on screen over the uh, snippet of gameplay to the previous episode in this series which came out on Tuesday so click that if you missed it and that will take you to that and also feel free to follow me on Twitter as well at Chesnoy Gaming as the Twitter handle there will be a link to that in the description as well but that is all from me today guys so thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time